Hey, it's your pal Mike Shea from Sly Flourish, here with another episode of Sly Flourish's Lazy DM Prep. In this weekly show, I go through steps from the book Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master while preparing for my Sunday D&D game. In this case, I am running the hardcover adventure Rime of the Frostmaiden. This show, like all of the work of Sly Flourish, is brought to you by the patrons of Sly Flourish. If you want to help me out and help support shows like this, you can do so by going to patreon.com slash slyflourish and signing up. The link for that is in the show notes below. You can also help me out by supporting my current Kickstarter for the Lazy DM's Companion. This is the third book of the Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master series, uh, which includes Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master, the Lazy DM's Workbook, and the Lazy DM's Companion. The Lazy DM's Companion is a book of guidelines and inspirational generators to help you better prepare and uh, improvise your 5e D&D games. I'm really excited. The Kickstarter is doing very well. If you like the work that I do, I think you're really going to love this book. It is also your chance to buy for the first time ever offset printed versions of all three books, including a hardcover version of Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master, a spiral bound version of the Lazy DM's workbook, and a soft cover version of the Lazy DM's Companion. So I hope you'll check that out. The link for that is also in the show notes below. So yes, where do we stand in my Rhyme of the Frostman game? It has been such a crazy week for me. I have to really go back and even recall uh, what happened in the last session. So we're gonna go back to our old session notes. As always, I am using Notion for my campaign planning. If you wanna learn more about using uh, Notion for your campaign, you can uh, find the link for that in the show notes below. Also to this campaign guide to see how to see my own. So let's see, it was on the 26th. That's right, so we only had, ah, uh, so we had only three players last game. So three of my players could not make it to the game. We hemmed and hawed a little bit about whether we should go forward. And I decided, yeah, I think it'd be fun to go forward. So we started off by one of the players who had been killed in the previous session, returning as a zombie. So they had to fight a zombie assassin version of Candle who leapt, leapt around like a crazy ninja zombie. And he was really hard. He backstabbed really. I actually used his character sheet instead of using the stat block for like a, an assassin. I used his character sheet and that worked really well. Uh, he was really dangerous and scary, and but they, they were able to defeat him, so it wasn't too challenging. And then they cast Revivify on him, that one of the other characters who wasn't there cast Revivify on him, and they were all sort of out of commission. So they sort of brought the other three people with them, but it was the three characters for the players that were there that actually went on. They went to the Druid's Grove. They met um, Halfcaster, Melisoon Halfcaster. Melisoon Halfcaster is an NPC I created who is an Oni that has been trapped on the island by the Frost Maiden. So they met Melisoon. Melisoon gave them a bunch of information, a bunch of secrets about this stuff, including that the statues, they, they told the lie that the statues give power, all this other stuff. They almost went down and started smashing statues. If they had done so, Oral would have shown up, even though there's only three of them. That would have been really interesting. They Before they destroyed a statue, they learned like, wait a minute, we're pretty sure that these statues aren't her source of power. We think we're being tricked. At which point the Oni revealed himself and explained like, look, I still want this stuff and I'll give you all this information. And they're like, we're, we're just really happy we don't have to fight an Oni. And he gave them a lot of information about what was going on. And they made their way up to Grimskull and opened the door and started exploring Grimskull, the Grimskull Citadel itself. One thing I learned is that the island, I think uh, I learned this from uh, DM Sam, Sam Dillon, who said that the island is called Sol Solace. I, I think that the island is called Solace. If not, he made it up and gave it a name called Solace. And I think that's really great. And I wish I had used that, but I've been calling it Grimskull Island. So I guess I'm gonna have to live with that. My other group is calling it Solace. So at least one of my groups has got it right. So they are, they, they have started there. They learned, they learned that the statues give power. They also learned that that was a lie. They learned that the endless night, they learned about the codicil of the white. They also learned about the power of Thrun and that they, we're going to have to seal the sarcophaguses, the sarcophagus in the city of Yethrin. So they learned about that. So they know that there's now two things that they have to accomplish to end the endless night. And that's, that is useful, right? I, I really hammered that in. They know that the codicil, yeah, they learned this, um, that the codicil and the sarcophagus of Thrun both, both, both must both be dealt with for the, to end the endless night. They a lot of these ones about oral they didn't learn that. So there's some of these other ones that they have not yet picked up, which I may just steal. I'm just gonna I'm gonna I know I say rewrite your secrets, do as I say, not as I do. But to save a little bit of time, I'm probably gonna grab some of these secrets that I didn't use last week and move them. But we'll see what other secrets you come up with. So that was where things go. So we're certainly to have more players this week than we had last. I don't know who is out. So we're gonna create a new session tent planning template as we do. Today is the 3rd of October, Sunday Frost Maiden. Drop those secrets. 
Let's take a look at the characters. We have Ilda. Ilda was one of the characters that was here last time. So Ilda is trying to find her place. She desperately wants to end the Endless Night and she is willing to sacrifice herself to do so. And that's the hard, when I asked about like what hard question you worried about facing in the future, that was her hard question. But I think the better question is what, who else would she sacrifice? And I think that, you know, that's something that's gonna come into, come into roll higher die says was just about to ask how often you recycle unused secrets and clues rarely i'm doing it now to save a little bit of time because i'm running a little late today but typically i don't recycle secrets and clues a lot of times i will get recycled because i'll just remember them again and i'll just put them back in the list again and that is how i kind of recommend generally i don't don't worry about trying to hit old secrets and moving them forward i do it because it's convenient and of course it's a lazy trick and lazy tricks are good so yeah i'm, I'm okay with that shadowhawk was also here last week uh, shadowhawk is a, a half mind flayer half drow sorcerer he just picked up a weird artifact of thrun that now enables him to when he burns his sorcery points he can do this weird ethereal tentacle attack so he's very happy perrin fat rabbit i'm skipping down here because perrin was here last week as well perrin is also trying to figure out how to end the endless night and he's starting to break free of his conspiracy theories he he definitely has seen that like his conspiracy theories are true he's seen mind flayers he's seen the power of thrun he's here on this island he knows that there's this crazy stuff going on so he's starting to get behind like how to how he's going to solve this and his big thing is like is he going to fly off with his brother or not we have Auken Dawncaller. Auken is a uh, Goliath of the Worm Doom Crag Goliaths. He has seen visions of what exists underneath the ice. We have Gore Wan Alcazar. Gore is a uh, member of the Wan Alcazar. He, he runs Wan Alcazar Associates. He's a secret noble. And he, you know, really kind of in it for them. And then we have Candle in the Dark. Candle escaped his life in uh, Waterdeep. And, and in Skullport as a servant of the Xanathar and him and his, him and his family are here in Icewind, Icewind Dale. So those are the characters and it's really important. The character stuff is really important because they are likely to start facing the trials today if they don't get through the trials completely. We're gonna have to really, we've been talking about that now for a few weeks and we're really gonna have to refine it this week and probably a fair bit of improvisation, but most of it is like making sure that I have the material that I need in my head to be able to improvise cool scenes about what happens, about what happens here. So let's take a look at uh, Grimskull and see where they ended up. They had, I'm gonna open this map up here. So they had come in through the front door. They had entered G3, area G3 is where they face the frost giant Urtgard. They ended up fighting him right away. I forget why, but they pretty much went right into a fight. And they found a good sized pile of treasure that he had been hoarding here. But they did not get this other information about him. They did get the alchemy jug. So they now have that kind of new new thing there. And we ended it there. So so what is a what would be a cool strong start that happens there? So we have the recovery uh, you know, Candle's recovery. An interesting thing about Candle returning is what Candle, you know, what might Candle have learned in his death state, right? Like he died and he died here and he was killed by a, uh, a zombie dragon. You know, when he went to the other side, what might he have learned? Might he have learned of the you know, the, 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 the bridges of Armageddon, right? So I think this might be kind of cool, you know, multiple, you know, the Armageddon events, kitty, not now. So there are a number of Armageddon events that he will see prophecies of, right? Orcus and the resurrection of the elder brain. That's one Armageddon event, the coming of the Githyanki, the coming of the Githyanki arm armada, the release of Thrun, that's a big one, and Orals freezing over of Icewind Dale. Those are kind of the, the four different, so what are these? Like, so one of the things I wanna have is because in the It Ascendant, there were mind flayers who, my cat is being a pill. Hey, cat. There are, because the mind flayers of the It Ascendant, the ones that actually brought the It Ascendant here, left the It Ascendant and went down, they took their elder brain, which had been injured during the, so this could be a good secret, right? The elder brain aboard the it ascendant was injured. The mind flares brought it to Orcus, 
who infused it with necrotic power. Uh, so that's a good secret. And that lead that, you know, oh my God, we're going to have undead mind flayers pouring out of the Underdark. So what, uh, so somebody says, what's the whole deal with Orcus? There is an image. Oh, wait a minute. I think I've got it uh, in my NPCs. So if I go here, I will show you. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm sneaking in a touch of Out of the Abyss, right? So in Out of the Abyss, the demon princes have come down to the Underdark. And there's an image that is in, I don't remember what book it's in, but it's an image of Orcus putting necrotic energy around an elder brain. And I've always wanted to use this image. I thought it just, it looks so awful, right? It looks so like, this is so bad, right? When I showed it to my other group, the player who saw it said, yep, I'm done, right? Like <laughs> that's someone else's. So I really want to drop this in as like a, yeah, you've been dealing with the Frost Maiden and you've been dealing with the Endless Night and all this, but guess what? There's something even worse happening in the Underdark, right? And just kind of alert them that, oh my God, that's happening too. And I just want to bring the scale up. Yeah, I think they put it in the Neverwinter MMO. I think that's where it ended up too. So I love that image and I'm bringing that in. And it's not really anything that I expect the characters to deal with, even in this campaign. But I think it will be a fun thread to just make, oh, by the way, this is also happening. And then we have uh, the Armada. And if we go to, I think it is, is that, I think it's a Morden Canaan's. And we have the Gith. There is an image in here of, yeah, here it is. We're going to take this image and we're going to make a new one in here. The Gith Yankee. And we're going to make a new thing. New page in Frostman Campaign Database. And in here, we're going to paste this. And this isn't really, we're going to, we're going to call this a villain, right? And the idea here is that the Lich Queen sends the Githyanki Armada to Faroon to rid the land of its illithid corruption, right? So, so that is another, another big angle. And then we can have the, 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 the Knights of the black sword hope to open up the sarcophagus of Thrun and release the elder evil in the world. That's another vision that they could get. And then the fourth is of course the vision they saw before, probably that oral, oral's rhyme is growing exponentially and will soon freeze every living thing in Icewind Dale and beyond. Maybe they get a vision of a frozen Neverwinter. That'd be kind of cool. So those I think are some kind of, those are the, the visions. I think these are Candle's visions, right? So instead of Icewind Dale, it's Neverwinter. Candle has seen the Armageddon events. And Candle was from Waterdeep. So maybe he sees a frozen Waterdeep. That would be pretty cool. So cool. All right. So that's our strong start, right? And a lot of it is like, well, we can't do anything about that. So, but we have to just, you know, we're, we're here now. We need to get that codicil. We can at least stop some of these and we're gonna have to figure out these other ones. Maybe they're not even our problem. So then we look at where they're going, right? So they, they did G3. So we have, I think they saw G2 as well. So we'll look at four, five, six. They can either go up to the palace level most of this, and actually somebody asked a, a question about doing prep for dungeons. I actually find dungeon prep to be pretty easy. So I don't think I have to do a lot of prep for these rooms. I'll just run them and that will be fine. What I really need to worry about, and I think where we're going to spend the bulk of today is thinking about the, so we'll have exploration of Grimskull and we'll link, linky link to the Grimskull so I have it handy. And then the trials, right? Let's see, we can uncheck. Oh, that was one that they already... I think they learned both of these, but I'll, I'll keep them in there, whatever. So this is the problem when I copy and paste them is like, didn't I give that one out? I don't know. I'm not gonna worry about fantastic locations today. They are very likely to face Oral, one of Oral's forms. There are two of her forms right here in on Grimskull and Solace. So 
I should get the stat blocks for those. And we should also take a look at these stat blocks and see how we feel. So I think it, I think the third form is what they're going to face in the chamber with the codicil. And at that point, I think we're going to be done with Solace. They'll, they'll get out. I don't think we're going to have any trouble with them leaving the, the island. So we'll see. Uh, but they might also face Oral's second form. Wouldn't it be bad if they face two forms of Oral? They're like, oh my God, are we facing two forms? And then I think the key is like, they're going to have to face all of the forms again, right? These are, this is my test run. Here's a good tip. If you're running a boss and you're not sure how it's going to play out, find a narrative reason why they have to face the boss more than once. And the example here is Oral's a god, so she can kind of do whatever she wants, right? Oh, they might also face the rock. Ignis, what's the name of the rock? Is Iskra. Sopo. Uh, sorry, I'm, sorry I'm, I'm doing NPCs. I'll get to my tip. Uh, Sopo, and then we had Halfcaster, whose name I always forget, so I just remember. I remember Halfcaster. Melisoon. Mel Melisine have kept. any other NPCs. We could have a frost druid, the failed frost druid, right? He's dying. Let's get a quick name for this one. Well, let's go to our NPCs. This is Austin. No, Halstein. Yeah, Halstein. I wanted to be a uh, follower of Oral and failed at the tests and is now freezing to death. So that way they can learn more about the trials and what they need to do during the trials. So if you find a narrative reason to run a boss more than once, and that way you can test it, right? If you have a boss, I did this with Imrith from, from Storm King's Thunder that she sent a simulacrum of herself. And that way I could test out, like how does the group do against an ancient blue dragon, right? We'll do an ancient blue dragon that's like half the power and we'll see. Turns out ancient blue dragons are pretty badass. So liches are a good one because you have flactories. So you can try a lich, you know, a lich could be taken off guard, but then the lich might build up resources. So in this case, like Oral has three forms, right? Oral is almost a mythic kind of monster in that she's got three forms that, that she face that you can face, right? And each of them have like vulnerabilities and advantages and stuff like that. And what I want to do is run each of them independently so that they run into the independent forms of Oral, but then eventually they'll face Oral herself and they'll face all three forms one right after the other. And there'll be like a mythic battle against all three monsters, right? And we'll see how that, we'll see how that plays out. And I can try it by having them face them off one at a time. Like, are, is this vulnerable, vulnerability to radiant damage really a problem or not, right? Like, you know, I don't know. I'll, I'll try it. So, so that's pretty good. Cat's being a pill today. So that's what I'm gonna try. I think they're gonna face, they're certain, I, I, I'm almost certain that they're gonna face the third form when they get the Codicil of the White. And it's gonna be protecting the Codicil of the White and they're gonna have to face, destroy this. Like the Codicil will be in this crystal and then the, the crystal will suddenly attack them. So yeah, somebody says, why make one after the other? Maybe all three attack at the same time. That would be pretty good. That'd be pretty hard. And it's also, they're all legendary and running multiple legendary monsters in one battle is a real chore. It is really hard. I do not recommend it. So I, I think I'll, I think I'd rather do one after the other with other monsters to, to make each battle hard or challenge. They just got a pile of treasure, so I don't think I need to drop any more treasure in right now. I'm not going to worry about treasure. Now, they get the codicil, right? And so what does the codicil do? Oh, cat. Why? Why, cat? So. Yeah, so I don't, I don't, I, we can, we can drop in a, uh, one of these snuff box that casts invisibility. Smoky jeweled egg of the netherese that casts contact other plane. That sounds kind of cool. What would the netherese one be doing here? I guess somebody could have brought it. That would be cool. Come on. Okay. And then we can get rid of this and we'll just keep it. I don't really use these uh, marching orders. I guess I still use them. So I think that that will work. So, but, but really the big one is, you know, the trials, right? The Trials of Oral. So how are the trials going to work? Uh, when the characters get down to, let's find it here. Oh man, somewhere in here. I think it's in G10. Let's let's read up on what the book actually said. Oh man. When they get down to da, 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 Grimskull. So there's all these different places they can go and they get down to G10. G10 is the ice rink. That's kind of funny. Then you have the tomb entrance. That is the tomb for, oh, I think I was going to do, I think I had this in the last one too. Let's, let, let me real quick look at my last session notes because I think I was going to put another weapon in here, an ax of the queen, right? I think I've got two characters that can both use it. Old session notes. And we're going to go to last Sunday. Yeah, Vazavictin's 
battle axe. So we're, we're taking that and we're going to put that in today's too, because I think that that is a, an item they're going to run into. Whoops. Didn't I have another one in here? No, that's a location. So what am I doing there? So that works. So close that and get rid of some of these things. Get rid of that scary picture. So at G12 are the guards. Okay. So, so there's a tomb. They go in and there's frost giants. That's 13 is Vesa Victon's tomb. That's cool. We'll run that. And the axe, which is a berserker axe. We're going to change that. 15 is the tests of the frost maiden. So all of these, I guess there's all of these four chambers on the outside. And what's 20? I'm going to skip all the tests, right? And 20 is the entrance to the vault. So how does it work? So let's think about this. Okay, so, so that, that's physically, that's what we know. So the 10, there's 11. There's the doors that have the trials. There's the big one that tells you that, you know, that the trial got, and then you have the vault. So that's, that's all cool, right? We're all good with this. The question is how specifically do the trials work so there's four doors does somebody if if let's and, and and this is where you need to think you know we we think beyond the characters i'm not concerned about how it plays out today i'm concerned with how it was built so Vasav, in vasavictin's tomb they created the trials and the trials are there who created them was it other druids? Probably other followers and worshipers of Oral created this. And they said, if you want to become one of us, you have to succeed. You have to succeed in the trials, right? Somebody has to succeed in the trials. Now, obviously, okay, now I am cheating and I do want it to go a certain way. You don't have to succeed in all four trials. You have to succeed in one trial, but, but perhaps four trials have to be accomplished, does that mean there always have to be four druids that come in? That seems kind of weird, right? Like if the door, so basically you have a door, the only way to get through the door is to succeed in four trials. So can one person do all four trials? And if they all succeed in all four trials, then they can make it in. Does a person have to only succeed in one trial? But we don't want just one trial because then one person could do one trial and then they're done and the door opens. So we don't want that. We want four characters to have to do four trials. This is tricky, right? The Frost Maiden will permit a B minus average. Yeah, so the idea that you have multiple characters, I think all four trials have to be accomplished. You know, all four trials have to be accomplished. And I think the one trick I'm gonna say is that the same character cannot do multiple trials. But, but Druids could, I don't know why. I guess maybe like the Druids always had to come in groups of four. That might, that might make more sense. So, so the rules. And I don't think we need every character to do a trial. So the druids came in groups of four. All four must succeed. All four must succeed to open the, the vault. Only one druid can do each trial at a time. So, and, and, and the key that they have is because they have more people if somebody fails at a trial, somebody else can go try it, right? This is really hard because like what? Yeah, so what's like the three of five keys angle to this? How can, how can, if, if, because essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to put each, each character who, who engages in a trial will have a, a vision or a, a, a place that feels as real to them as anything else, either in the past or the future, where they have to make a really hard choice. And that choice, the choice they have to make is based on the theme of the trial, cruelty, endurance, isolation, or preservation, right? And you can make it like the grail, if you go back to Excalibur, like the grail, right? Where he, you know, gets to the doors and it says, you know, what's the, you know, who does it serve, you know? What is the secret of the grail? Who does it serve, right? And he fails and the next thing you know, he's hung up on a tree and then he comes back later and he says, you know, what is the, you know, what is the secret of the grail? I forget what the secret is, but the grail serves the Lord, right? So, so they could try to attempt it again. Can they attempt the trial again? Somebody else can try it, right? And they can learn about it. So I, I kind of want them I kind of want them to know ahead of time what the right answer is, but that the right answer is actually the hardest answer. 
and sure they can do it and they can become that way, but it will actually change them, right? They will, they will have done what they did. It's as real to them as anything else is real. And they'll have to live with the fact that they have, they, they made, they, they, not that they made that choice, but that they would be willing to make that choice. Right. And all it was. So, yeah, so that, so that could be a, a way to do it. I, I guess I'll just kind of wing this and like, I know what I want what I want to have happen is that each of the characters tries it. They succeed in the trial. The trial is really hard. They make a hard choice. And then after four of them do it, the door opens. And maybe nobody will ask about how that works beyond that. But ideally, you want like the, the situation should work that way too. And I'm building the situation a little bit too much around what the characters would do. So let's stop for a minute. And let's think about like if you were Oral or you were the high priests of Oral and you wanted to build... You know, you wanted to build a trial and the idea was like the ultimate, you know, the ultimate state of becoming a true acolyte, a true follower of Oral is reading the Codicil of the White, right? You get a chance to read the original Codicil of the White. And this is as close as a mortal can be to a follower of Oral, right? To be to, be to Oral herself. So you lock up the Codicil in a vault and you say, in order to be granted entrance to this, you must you you must complete a trial. And you walk in and you see these trials. And probably as a druid, you would have to just succeed in one of these trials. You would go up, you would walk through the door, you would find yourself in your past. You'd have to like, I guess I got a, my, my, my little sister. I loved my little sister, but I'd have to be willing to let her freeze to death in order for the, for the greater good of oral right for the for the for the purity that's actually the right answer is that she freezes to death and that's cruelty right and then you 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 step out and you have done this terrible act and you know and and frostman says you are willing to sacrifice your own sister to be one of my members you may come in and read the code of soul of the white the tricky bit with that is that from a character perspective there are only one person would have to do it at that point and that's kind of lame so that's too easy you know three of the four do three of the four people have to do it so i, I think we're gonna have it i think i'm gonna i'm gonna gamify it a little bit and say that each each one of these tests must be completed if somebody fails at the test if they choose the wrong choice they'll get thrown out and they cannot do it again but somebody else can go do it and we'll hope we have five players at least so they have one chance for failure and and you know and i'll manipulate the situation a little bit so that they will they will succeed they will remember because some some players will have a harder time understanding it than others so I think that's good. Let's take a review of like, what are the things that they will face? So Shadowhawk, for example, will have returned to Zalaren where the matron mother, it, he, I think he has to make a choice of either fully becoming a mind flayer or letting his house dissect them to remove the symbiote so they can, they can bring the, its psionic nature to their, to their house, right? Maybe the choice... Maybe like a key is like the choices are so bad that it, it there is no fail state. You just serve, you know the only fail state is like not doing it or running away, right? Or or being unwilling to do the choice. But like sort of Kobayashi Maru. If, if you do the Kobayashi Maru, that's the only way you really fail. So Ilda has to sacrifice her own new clan of Goliaths to save the rest of Icewind Dale. That's definitely a possibility. Or she finds herself as a knight of the black sword, and she has to she has to make the hard choice. Gorwan Alcazar has to sacrifice his family name. Gorwan Alcazar has to sacrifice his family name in order to become, he has to leave it behind everything, like all of his possessions, all of his stuff, every, all, all of his ends. He has to, he has to go with that. And the person who's navigating him through this is Torga, who's frozen to death, right? I think that that, that can work, right? Like the idea that the one person that he basically condemned to f being frozen to death is the one that's going to navigate him through this situation. Like you have to give up everything, right? You want to be a follower of Oral. You have to give up your true name. You have to give up your... You know, you have to get, and I think it's time for Gore to actually say who he is, right? Speak the name, and when, and when you say it, you lose it. I like that trial. That's cool. Aachen faces his father who became an acolyte of Oral. Slay the father or let the Rhine take over the village and turn the Goliaths into servants of Oral. Father was murdered, and he'll learn that the, the father was murdered by Aemon Milesian. That would be a cool bit of hard stuff. Perrin Fat Rabbit learns that his, that his brother is going to become... Connected to the mind flayers has to choose to either let him be and let them become part of the collective or candle is facing the Xanathar. He has a choice of giving himself up, giving his, he has to give his family up. I don't think he has the choice of giving himself up because of course he would do that of giving up his family or 
Whoops, that was weird. He has a choice of giving up his family to the Xanathar. Or what? What would he care about more than his family? His current friends, his new companions, right? Who is more important? That, yeah, I don't know. He cares more about his family than anything else, but he cares about the Endless Night. So, you know, what? in what circumstance? I like the idea that the Xanathar is the one who's choosing it or freezing Icewind Dale. Is that right? He has to, you know, what if he chooses his family? Which is the right choice, right? In that situation of, of either you give up your family. So, you know, you almost want him to, he has to give up all of it, right? That if he wants to, if he wants to reach the codicil, he must give up his family and and Icewind Dale, right? So that they, like, you know, they'll watch it freeze. I, I like this image of, 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 I like the image of the Xanathar slowly disintegrating his family members because it's really horrible. But what is the alternative, right? Like, you know, what, what does he have to allow for that to happen? And, and if he chooses his family, is that the wrong answer? Right, like from the Frost Maiden. The problem is, I'm using the Xanathar. Xanathar is a stand-in for the Frost Maiden, right? It's his version of the Frost Maiden. So, the Xanathar is saying, like, you have to give up your family for this, right? If you want, you know, if you if you really you have to let them go. What if he is the Xanathar? You know, what if he it's first person and he, and they're in the way, right? And He's got all these eyes, right? And he, you know, realizes he's the Xanath. No, oh, that's kind of, that's a little too weird. And I think he has to make that choice. If he says no, he fails. Yeah, I think so. I think, I think we're okay with that. So I think that these are pretty good. You know, I'm going to probably have to improvise these. I'll be in the moment and I'll improvise them as we go. The key is like, you want to, the way I'm thinking about the trials, the way I'm, 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 I'm I'll find out today if it works, right? Is that, you have the theme, cruelty, endurance, isolation, and preservation. I have to remember the theme and then remember the situation that I'm throwing the character in and try to use the merging of these two ideas. What's that theme and what's that situation so that the choices that are in front of them are based on that, are based on that idea, the idea of cruelty, the idea. So like, what's the cruel, you know, and a lot of these I think can work. So yeah, we'll see how it works. But I, I think that idea can work, that if you if you have a good, you know, if you have a good understanding of the hard choice that is going to be in front of the character and you have the theme that you can use those two together to improvise a situation for the player that that shows them the hard one. And the right answer is giving up your life. The whole point of this is giving up your life to serve oral. Right. That's that's the, the themes are based on that. Right. So what are the characters willing to give up to serve oral? Right. And then how they give that up is based on cruelty, endurance, isolation, or preservation. I don't know what preservation is exactly. Preservation is a weird theme. I think the other ones I can, I can figure out. Is there something that one of them is broken? I'm not sure. Does the trial affect the fight with Oral? I don't think so. I think the trial is just to get into the door. Somebody else asked, are they real? Are they real? Are they making real choices? Yes, they are making real choices. Are the outcomes real? I don't know that they will know, right? And I think that I'm going to play them up, that the choice that they make is a permanent choice. And even if they go back and Candle's family is still there, he'll always know that he was willing to give them up to do this, right? I think that that's, that's kind of the key. You know, I think that that's kind of the key. So I think, I think we're good there. So I think, let's take a look at the notes today and see, do I feel like I'm good? I've got a strong start. I've reviewed the characters. I've got my scenes. Uh, so what happens after this? After this, they return to 10 towns. And then they make, I think, and then they head to, they're, they're, do they have any other? They head to the Regged Glacier, enter the Caves of Hunger, and then venture into Yethrin. So I, I think they're hitting the tail end. Like, I mean, the tail end could take a long time, right? But I think like this is the bulk of the outline about where they're going to go next, that they, they will have done the trials of Grimskull. They'll have the codicil of the white. And their next step is to return to 10 towns, probably downtime. Then they head to the Regged Glacier. They enter the Caves of Hunger and they venture into Yethrin. And that's kind of the end of the adventure for them. So I think that they are, you know, I think that they're making, oh, what am I thinking about? Return to 10 towns. Oops. Which is on fire. 
face the Chardalon dragon in East Haven. Where were the yeah? Where where is the Chardalon dragon gonna go? I think. I think it's burning East Haven by the time they get back. They will it will have already destroyed Dugan's Hole. It will probably have laid sunder to much of Goodmead. And now they've got a by the when they get back, they're gonna have to race there because the Shardalon Dragon is destroying East Haven. And then next steps. So then downtime. And then they had to then they head to the Reggae Glacier. So then all these three are the next the next pieces. Pretty smooth outline from that point out. I don't think so because they never went to Sunblight Citadel. Does that change anything? I mean, they could get revenge. That is an option. The revenge against the Duergar at Sunblight. So we'll see. But that's that's where things are going. So I think we are all set for today. I've got what I need. The trials are going to be interesting. We're going to see how that plays out. I, I think I like it better. I like I, in my head. I like it better than what's in the book. And I'm usually when I feel good about something, that means it'll run just because of that I'm confident in it. If I'm confident, it's good. But it may be a little too loosey goosey, so we'll find out. So we'll find out. Anyway, I want to thank all of my friends for hanging out with me today while I prepared for my Sunday Frost Maiden game. I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, if you did, you can help me out in a few different ways. One, you could subscribe to the Sly Flourish newsletter. Two, you can subscribe to my videos on YouTube. Three, you can su support me directly on Patreon by going to patreon.com slash Sly Flourish and signing up. Uh, four, you can support my currently going Kickstarter for the Lazy DMs Companion. All of the links for this are in the show notes below. Thank you all very much for hanging out with me today. Have a great day and get out there and play some D&D. &D.